GMAT problem solving practice question. I'll classify this question as a 700 level question. Quite an interesting question, a difficult one. It comes from the topic coordinate geometry. The following concepts are tested. Properties of lines, equations of lines, and a little bit of number properties. Let's get started. So a test contains points whose x and y coordinates are natural numbers. Point P, an element in set S, has the following property. The sum of the distances from point P to 8, 0 and 0, 12 is the lowest among all elements found in set S. How many such points P exist is what we need to find out. Let's quickly jot down key data, ask some relevant questions and then get around to solving this question. What does set S contain? Set S contains points whose x and y coordinates are positive integers or natural numbers. An example could be something like 7, 8. 7 is a positive integer, so is 8. The x and y coordinates are both natural numbers. What cannot be an element in set S? We'll look at few examples. We're not going to be exhaustive about it. It's not possible either. Something like a minus 4, 6 is not an element of set S because the x coordinate is not a positive integer. It's a negative number. Neither can something be like 4.2,8 is not possible because 4.2 is not an integer, 4.2 has a decimal. So these are all not points in element or not elements of set as 7,8, 4,5, 2,7. These all are examples of elements that can be found in set as. Let's find out what is the definition of point P. Point P is an element in set as, which means its x and y coordinates are both going to be natural numbers. It satisfies the second condition. That is the sum of the distances from point P to 8, 0 and 0, 12 is the lowest among all elements that you will find in set S. Let's understand when will the sum of the distances be at its least. The sum of the distances is going to be least at this particular instance. Let's get started. First 8, 0, let's plot this in an xy plane. 8, 0 is somewhere here. The x coordinate is 8, y coordinate is 0. 0, 0,12 is this point. What is the shortest distance between these two points? Let's come to the shortest distance between the sum of the distances from P to these two points. The shortest distance between 8, 0 and 0, 12 is a straight line distance between these two points. Let's say P is a point here. Now, the sum of the distances from P to 0, 12 and 8, 0 will be these two. Right? I'm basically going to join this. So this, let's say, is equal to A. This is equal to B. Now, let's look at a converse. So what is going to be the distance between P and these two points? A plus B. Let's look at a scenario where P is not somewhere here. P lies on this line segment joining 0, 12 and 8, 0. Now, the distances are going to be, I'll call it as, let's say a C and a D. C plus D is a straight line distance. Whereas, if point P does not lie on this line segment, lies elsewhere, a plus B is going to be the distance between points B, some of the distances between point P and these two points. Do we know a property of triangle? Property of a triangle says that sum of any two sides will be greater than the third side. So A plus B should be greater than this straight line distance, which is equal to C plus D. Or in other words, if the line segment joining 8, 0 and 0, 12 is the shortest distance between these two points, Unless point P lies on this line segment, the sum of the distances C plus D cannot be at its lowest. So it is evident that point P lies on the line segment joining 8, 0 and 0, 12. Repeat it in printed form here. The sum of the distances from point P to the other two points, 8, 0 and 0, 12, will be at its lowest only when point P lies on the line segment joining these two points. Now we need to find out how many values can P take. First step, let's find out the equation of the line segment joining these two. Because if point P is a, is a point on this line, it's going to satisfy the equation of this line. What are 8, 0 and 0, 12 for that line? Those are basically the x-intercept and y-intercept of the line. The x-intercept of a line is A, y-intercept of the line is B. Then the equation of a line is given by x upon A plus y upon B equals 1. For us, the x-intercept is 8, y-intercept is 12. So the equation of this line is x upon 8 plus y upon 12, this is equal to 1. Take the LCM of 8 and 12, that's equal to 24. Let's make that as a common denominator. So it's going to be 3x plus 2y, this is equal to 1. I'm going to rewrite it as 3x plus 2y is equal to 24. So now we know the equation of the line segment joining these two points. P is a point on this line segment, which means that any value that P takes will satisfy this equation. 
we need to find out such values of p which where x and y are both natural numbers. To get to that, I'll write it in the typical y equals mx plus c format. So I'll write this equation as 2y is equal to 24 minus 3x or y is equal to 24 minus 3x upon 2. This is an easy way to determine how many x and y, both of which are all natural numbers exist. Let's come up till this point in a printed form and then find out how many such values exist. Right. The equation of the line is x upon 8 plus y upon b which is equal to 1 which is x upon 8 plus y upon 12 equals 1, 3x plus 2y equals 24. We are rewriting this such a way that this equation becomes y equals 24 minus 3x by 2. Now look at it, we know that y is an integer which means this entire part is an integer. Something divided by 2 is an integer then this part, the numerator has to be even. 24 is even, even minus even is what will result in even which means that 3x has to be an even number. Is 3 even? No. Which means that x has to be even. I will quickly run through this introduction once more. y is an integer. When we rewrite y, we realize that y is written as 24 minus 3x upon 2, which means this expression 24 minus 3x upon 2 has to be an integer. If it is divisible by 2, the numerator part 24 minus 3x has to be even. 24 is even. Even minus even is what will give us an even number which means that unless 3x is even, the result is not going to be even. 3x is even, we know 3 is odd. Unless x is even, 3x could not be even. So we have deduced that x is an even number. There's one more reduction you can do. If you write x in terms of y, let's just quickly run it to. So it's going to be 3x is equal to 24 minus 2y. I'm taking the 2y now to the right hand side, which means that x is going to be equal to 24 minus 2y upon 3 x is an integer which means 24 minus 2y by 3 is an integer which means 24 minus 2y should be this expression the numerator should actually be a multiple of 3. 24 is a multiple of 3 which means 2y should also be a multiple of 3 for it to be a multiple of 3. 2 is not a multiple of 3 which means y has to be a multiple of 3. So two things we have deduced x is an even number y is a multiple of 3. We can start with one or the other and fill the remaining values. Let's get started. Let's put together whatever we have. The key thing is x has to be even, y has to be a multiple of 3. We, did, we checked out why that should be the case. Now let's put on values which will make sense. Both x and y are natural numbers. The smallest value that x can take such that x is even is x is a 2. When x is a 2, y will be equal to 24 minus 6 divided by 2. This is 18 by 2 which is equal to 9. So 2 comma 9 is one such point x is even positive integer next value that x can take is a 4 if x is a 4 y will be equal to 24 minus 3 into 4 which is a 12 divided by 2 24 minus 12 by 2 is a 12 by 2 which is equal to 6 look at y's y is all a multiple of 3 x is all even we are plugging in x is even we realize the result ends up being y being a multiple of 3 next value that x can take x is a 6 x is a 6, I'm going to calculate that here, y is equal to 24 minus 3 times 6 which is equal to 18 divided by 2. 24 minus 18 is a 6 upon 2 which is equal to 3. I'm going to go with x as an 8, if x is an 8 then y is equal to 24 minus 3 into 28 which is a 24 divided by 2 which is equal to 0. When x is a 8, y is no longer a natural number. So anything beyond this, y will end up in the negative territory, nothing is going to work beyond this. So how many numbers do we have? How many points do we have? 2 comma 9, 4 comma 6, 6 comma 3. Three points exist. Point P, number of values. How many P's exist in LM in set S? There are three values of P that will exist in set S. Choice E is the answer to this question. So this question had quite a few things. One, to deduce that point P has to be lying on the straight line joining these two points. Next, if point P is a point on that line, it has to satisfy the equation of the line. So finding out the equation of the line became important. Now point P is a point on the line such that X and Y coordinates are integers. There we have to deduce that X is an even number and Y is a multiple of 3 and then list down all possible values. So quite an interesting question. Run through this video once more. You do get questions of this kind which test this. Sometimes it might be worded this way. They may not be saying it as X and Y coordinate. They might call it as abscissa and ordinate. Both mean one and the same as x and y coordinates. Before you leave, two things. Sign up as a trial user at wzko.in slash core. It's one of the most comprehensive online GMAT course. Get started with a free topic, statistics and averages. Build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Subsequently pay up and unlock the remaining topics. 
lastly subscribe to the channel youtube.com/bizaco and spread the word among your friends who are preparing for gmat